Hey, it's Margaret from Play. In this video, we're rounding out our event series by talking about custom events. Custom events are different from all the other events because other events are predefined. So those events are things like the page loading or an object appearing or a variable changing. As the name suggests, custom events are caused by a custom event occurring, which you'll create in your project. For that reason, custom events have two parts. First, you need to cause the event to occur. And so you'll do that by adding a set event action to any trigger. The set event action will cause the event to occur, and then the custom event trigger will listen for that and then fire off other actions. And this custom event trigger is just an event trigger with the type set to custom. Now for all of this to occur, you first need to define an event, which you'll do from the events panel. So I already have three that I've defined, but if you wanna create a new one, you can just press this plus sign. And in there, all you have to do is define it by adding a name. Now that we understand how custom events work, let's use an example. So on my page here, I have this event trigger. Its type is custom, and now I just need to select the event. We'll select the event while it created, which is container scrolled. When the container scrolled event occurs, all of these actions are going to fire, but we need to cause it to occur. So let's do that on this next button. On this tap trigger, we're gonna add a set event action. The event needs to be the same, so we'll choose that container scrolled, which is what we put on the event trigger. Now, when I tap this button, it's not only gonna cause these actions to occur, but it's also going to cause the event to occur and all of these actions to fire. Now, the obvious question here is, why would you not just put all of these actions on the same tap trigger? Why do we need to put it in two separate places? That seems more complicated. Well, the reason is that you can fire the same event from multiple different triggers and all of them will cause the event trigger to fire. Let's look at this. So we just set up a tap trigger that fires the set event action. When that set event action fires, it's going to fire the custom event trigger and then all of the resulting actions will fire. But we could add a set event action that targets the same action to a scroll trigger or a shape trigger. Then whenever the set event action is fired from any of those triggers, it's still going to cause the custom event trigger to fire and the resulting actions to fire. So let's take a look at this. We already added a set event action onto our next button, but you can see I also have one added on the back button. And I also have one added on this scroll trigger, which is on the full carousel. So as the user is scrolling on this carousel, it's also going to trigger the same event. Now you can see on my device, as I scroll through this horizontal container in any way, either using these buttons or actually scrolling, whenever I reach the end, it's going to cause this to shrink down and basically be disabled. That's all happening from the same event. So instead of having to create all of these interactions on each one of those triggers, we've just created it once, and now each one of those triggers can cause all of these to fire. We don't have to create it again or edit it in multiple different places to keep things consistent. And that's how you use custom events in play. Most of our inspiration projects have custom events because they're just so powerful. So go check those out if you wanna learn more. And also keep a lookout on our channel because we'll create more tutorial videos with advanced examples for using events. Thanks so much for watching this video and this whole event series.